Hello everyone. Welcome to go live here on Instagram and Facebook. So give me a second here. Awesome. Now I'm live. Hello everyone here Facebook and Instagram. Sometimes it's a little difficult and hard to put two and two together as far as getting live at the exact same time for two different audiences. But I'm so thankful that you guys are all on here with me today. If you're on Facebook or Instagram, please let me know. Uh, give me a shout out. Hey, thumbs up. You know, hallelujah, something. So I can know who's on here with me today. I hope everyone had a great weekend. I tell you, you know, it's uh, life is really good. You know, even through sometimes difficult times, even through, you know, uh, just really hard times in our lives, it's always good to know that we can choose. You know, we can choose our joy. We can choose our happiness. We can choose, you know, uh, through maybe bad situations. We can choose to say, you know what, I'm not going to allow it to affect me because I know the situation's going to pass within any time now it's going to go away and i'll be back to my usual self you know and so you know things like that just try to navigate through that you know to bring out that joy to know that situations don't last forever and once again hey i just started but i'm already feeling like i'm prophesying to some people today that are on here with me today so if that's for you hey you know what take it all right uh choose today your joy no matter what situation is thrown at you so anyway i hope everyone's doing great today and i uh, really do and so good to see all my all my peeps all my families all my friends all my uh my favorites my all everybody everybody's my favorite so my family in the in the the church today i'm glad everyone's on here today and i hope everyone is doing great and blessed so um definitely so i'm excited today i wanted to talk a little bit about overcoming negative uh people uh, simply because of the fact that, you know, um, one of the things I've realized, and by the way, today I'm talking about my, my new book for this month of October, which is The Gospel of Manipulation, which once again, you know, sounds a little negative, but it's very positive and it's very enlightening. It's empowering because I wanted to face sort of the elephant in the room with people. You know, I wanted to be able to discuss that. You know, a lot of times we sort of bury our heads in the sand and sort of neglect or overlook, let's say, you know, the wrong that, you know, that people are going through or the, um, the bad that people are going through, you know, or maybe the abuse we see in church and just sort of focus on the, on the positive, you know, and, um, I was listening to a lady earlier who was, um, prophesying, you know, and she's basically saying, you know, a couple of things, you know, and then she's like, you know, saying, you know, um, uh, you know, I don't care if I lose 20,000 followers, you know, uh, I'm not going to tell you about it. God's going to give you a new home, a new car, you know, go to those other lying prophets, you know, and it just sort of, it sort of made me just cringe in my spirit because I thought, you know, we should really just never say things like that. We should always remember that, you know, first of all, there are prophets that are called to prophets of finance. There's prophets that are called to the wounded. There's prophets who are called to make a major economic or social or relational or even, you know, an anointing for job shifts, you know, within people's lives. And so we always want to be able to um, to sort of pull in that that understanding that there are prophets that are called to different, you know, backgrounds. And you know what? Really, any prophet should be called to anything in the kingdom because, you know, be all things to all people, you might win some. So, you know, that sort of let me down a little bit, you know, to hear you know, people say that, you know, but I know that we all suffer from lack of knowledge, myself included. We all suffer from things that, you know, we feel like we're right, people are wrong. And, and I really wanted to sort of, you know, just go on there for a moment and say, hey, you know what? I'm glad you're prophesying, you know, um, but don't, don't do that. You know, don't, don't, don't talk about, don't act like they're false prophets to people who, because some people need a new home. I mean, let's just face it. Some people, I mean, how many of you have really, you know, gotten a place where you're just, you know, maybe in a, you know, a, as my, as we used to say as a kid, a clunker, you know, like an old, really old car that's, you know, have, you're like bringing tongues over to start, you know, and you're scared to drive the interstate, you know, I mean, some people need a new car, you know, there's not, it doesn't mean there's nothing wrong with that, you know, hey, you know, God wants us to prosper. He wants us to have, you know, new things, you know, according to what his will is for each individual person. So, you know, I just wanted to sort of come on and start off with that because, you know, we, we have to look and respect people where they are and realize, you know what, everybody is looking for a new boost in life, you know, with their health, with their finances, with their joy. You know, sometimes it's good for people to, you know, to hear a prophet to say, hey, I just see a new car coming for you in your life. Maybe that's been a prayer of theirs for years. Maybe it's because they can't, you know, they can't even maybe, you know, get other people to ride with them because maybe they feel like it's so old, you know. So, hey. You know, I'm always about to say, just chill, you know, just chill, you know, prophets of doom, you know, just chill, take a chill pill, you know, and get some, get some grace. We love, we need to love people. The love, you know, the love of God is what wins us all over. Amen. And so I just want to say that real quick. So anyway, I'm excited because once again, you know, I, 
I believe there's, there's a great power in the gospel. I believe there's a great, beautiful thing within the church today. I really do. And sometimes I believe we, we do tend to focus on the negative. We do tend to see people and, and say, what are we doing? You know, I'll give you a great example. I have a lot of my friends, a lot of my friends who are deconstructing from the evangelical world. You know, um, not because they've been hurt or wounded, because they see a lot of damage in the evangelical world. You know, uh, I bless them. I bless them. Do what you got to do. You know, I mean, I, I can see your point. You know, I see people who run into evangelical world, you know, and say, hey, we're all this way, you know, and we got to fight, you know, and there's others who say we don't fight. That's not the New Testament. My thinking is this. You've got to do if you know in your heart of hearts that you know that God has called you and it's going to really help people. It's going to equip people. It's going to draw them closer to loving all people and loving God, you know, uh, then I would say do it. You know, I always have a, this this checklist in my spirit, you know, and uh, guess what checklist I have? No, but uh, I mean, I always have this checklist in my spirit because no matter what I preach on, teach on, and when I wrote this book, The Gospel of Manipulation, I wanted to make sure I went through my checklist in my spirit, and that is, is this going to draw people closer to other people? You know, yes. Is it going to draw people closer to the Lord? Yes. Is it going to make people skeptic and, you know, and get into conspiracy, crazy theories? You know, no, <laughs> you know. And to always keep this checklist, you know, I always say, is this going to make people weirded out? Is it going to make people, you know, like dislike people? Is it going to bring, you know, um, segregation? Is it going to bring, or, or, you know, division? Is it, gonna, you know, is it going to segregate people? And and if I have my checklist in my spirit that says, you know, no, 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 then I know that I'm doing what God wants me to speak about. Because, you know, we've been given the ministry of reconciliation. And one of the things I see within the church today, some areas, um, not with all people, is is I see a lot of manipulation. And it's not just in the obvious. It's not just, oh, the Lord says to you, send me $3,000 and I'll send you the rest of this prophetic word. You know, something like that. You know, hey, that's pretty obvious. Don't listen to those kind of people. You know what I mean? Or maybe the obvious of, you know, uh, the Lord says to you that, you know, uh, you need to, you know, get in the bed chambers with the pastor. I mean, you know, crazy things. And trust me, you might think, what? I have heard some crazy stuff. I mean, I've heard some off the wall crazy stuff. And you know, if you've been, if you've never been to some African churches, you know, oh Jesus help me, Lord, because I mean, it's all over the world, folks. I mean, manipulation sexually, you know, economically, all this stuff. And you know, so we we recognize us. You know, sometimes in the Western world, we recognize the the obvious, do we not? We recognize the obvious. That's like very manipulative, seducive, you know, um, and of course you guys know me, I don't always, you know, think everything's a spirit. I don't. I don't think a spirit's always attacking 24-7. I mean, you know, either greater is he that is in you than he's in the world, or that scripture's a lie, you know, um, either, you know, uh, God be for me, who can be against me, or either that scripture's a lie. You know what I'm saying? I mean, there's got to be a place when you're just an overcomer and you just focus on God, you know, the author and the finisher of our faith. You know, it's funny to me that when the scripture says things such as, um, you know, look up, know your redemption draws nigh. You know, it doesn't say, you know, do major warfare, fight every demon, bind cast, blah, 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 you know, and then your redemption draws nigh. It's a beautiful face of, of, of the church looking up and seeing the beauty of our God. That's That draws redemption. Think, think about that. Draw, that draws the redemption of Christ to us is when we look up and he's, he's able to see, not the God's up and the devil's down mentality, but you know, but he's able to see the beauty upon the church when we look up. It's like, you know, a child looking up in daddy's eyes or mommy's eyes. It's like, oh, you just want to just cry and weep. Like, I, I, I can't, you know, you can do no wrong. You know, like I'll give you whatever you want with that little cute face, you know, and you know, it's like, I feel, I feel like God sometimes looks at us that way. That when we we look up with those sort of puppy dog guys, you know, it's like, because we love God so much, it's like, you know what, that's why our redemption draws an eye, because he just looks at the beauty of, of children who say, I just, I just need you, I just want to love on you, God, that's it, you know, I don't have any major prayers here, you know, I don't need you to do this for me, I just, just want to love on you for a moment, you know, and, and so, you know, I just, I love that about the kingdom of God, and one of the things I see within you know, those little small pockets, you know, within the church, not as the whole church, but in small pockets, because I've traveled for so long, you know, um, I'll, I will say this real quick. I always say, you know, if you're an author, great, wonderful, but if you've never, if you haven't traveled around the world universally to see the different faces in the church worldwide, you know, be careful when you write on stuff like this, you know, because 
unless you've seen people and you've seen their struggles and you've seen their pain and you see maybe maybe like I said the falseness that you see maybe that church is sort of you know infiltrated among the people and you're seeing it from the outside looking in you see the controlism you know like I'm the man of God I'm the mentor I'm the apostle I'm the pastor I'm the prophet you don't do anything until I tell you to do it you know mentality and you're like whoa I'm seeing this and God love these people that can't see that you know and you know when you're riding on things like this you got to be real careful because you know if you haven't really traveled the world and haven't seen the many churches and, and the faces in the church and seeing this go on, you know, just be careful writing on it because you want to be able to make sure you're experiencing this. Uh, what, what's the best word to use? First, first hand. I want to see first class. First hand. You know, if you're not really seeing this, um, it's harder to write on because then you tend to go on a lot more. Um, not really judgmentalism, but you, you tend to go on things that you just hear and you see and you think versus what you've really seen with your own eyes and you can witness that, you know, to say, wow, you know, how can how can I write on something to help correct this, you know? And and so some of the things I've been teaching on within this book is really helping people to look out, to look out for those type of things, you know? Um, and just because, let's say, a church, let's say, is sort of maybe uh, cool, you know, and then we're more contemporary, more hip, you know, we don't use the apostle and prophet words jeremy said we're more cool and he up that's so good that's so good i always say let people's fruit speak for themselves before their title if somebody has to tell, tell you their title before their fruit or before their accuracy uh nine times out of ten they're probably insecure and not really maybe in that office that they have you know so just bless them don't curse them just bless them and go on you know um i'm not the person who always throws you're a false prophet, you know, of God, you know, because it's like I, you know, I've said this before, you don't know what people go through. And you and and that's somebody's mother, somebody's dad, somebody's grandmother, somebody's aunt, uncle, you know. I, you know, when I hear those things, you know, from the public and they bash people, it's just really it hurts me because, you know, that's somebody's kid. That's somebody's adult. That's or somebody's parent, you know, and you know that's why you don't hear me say things like that about presidents. I just I think it's tacky. I think it's I think it's rude. And you know, so in the church, you know, don't just don't be that person. You know, one of the things about staying away from negative people is is watching people who are extreme. You know, give you a great example. And I deal with this a little bit within the book. Um, besides your witchcraft, your rebellion, all those hardcore things, you know, in the book, I also lighten the mood a little bit. You know, let's. Set a candle and lighten the mood here, you know, because of the fact that when you when you look at the church, you have to remember that when we see somebody and we say, man, they're on fire for God, you know, because they're like, I'm telling you, the Lord says to you, and I don't care if I lose 20,000 followers, blah, 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 you know, and, and, and sometimes we tend to look at that and say that abrasiveness equals God, you know, or that's a fiery person, you know, or they're on fire for God. Well, are they really? Because abrasiveness and hardcore, I don't care if I lose 20,000 people, praise the Lord, hundo shundo, you know, doesn't always guarantee that it's a fire of God because sometimes like, we got to be careful because that could be a strange fire of immaturity, a strange fire of woundedness, a strange fire that maybe they've been taught in their theology that that's how that. Old Testament, bringing to the New Testament, prophet's supposed to be because we're supposed to be black and white and hard hitting, and you're gonna go to hell if you don't stop this, you know. And Jesus, you know, and and we we tend to feel that's a fiery person for the Lord, but we never stop to look at the face that Jesus was never abrasive, you know. When people say, "Well, he overturned the tables in the temple," he did, he did. However, you can't take a two percent. And, and block out the other 98% that Jesus was. You know, one of the things I really love about the kingdom of God is when Jesus, you know, and when people, people they get tripped up because of their sacred cows, their traditions, and that make the word of God of none effect when I say this, but you need to listen with a very mature ear. And that is, Jesus didn't speak of hell hardly ever. He didn't. You know, he spoke on the kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdom. The kingdom of God is like this. The kingdom of God is like that, you know? And, and realizing that the main thing Jesus wanted to be is an example of what a Christ follower should look like. You know, Christ was, as a son of God, he never went around saying, 
you know, hey, I'm the apostle, I, I'm apostle Jesus, you know, bow to me, and I, oh, you know, I mean, he never did that kind of stuff, and we're not making fun of that, we're just saying that you don't look at that, folks, I love each and every one of you, and I used to be that person, but I wanted to share with you, don't, don't be turned on by, by people that you think are on fire for Jesus, because they, you know, they're hard hitting, hallelujah, you know, and because, and I'm, I'm not making many fun of that. I'm just saying, please don't let that persuade your discernment because you've got to let your discernment to shine through to say, you know what? Hey, I bless them. I love them. But maybe, just maybe, they might be at a place where I'm not right now. Or maybe, maybe God is still working on them like they're working on me. You know, or maybe it's just that place where I don't want you in the charismatic, as I call it, the frenziness, the, the charismatic frenzy. I don't want that to, how can I say this, to tarnish you by you feeling like the kingdom of God is like, you know, that type of air, that type of a fire. I mean, if you think about it, notice the times Jesus ever mentioned the word fire or fired up. I mean, fired up, he never brought forth, you know. He never said the things that we do today. Doesn't make it wrong. It's not like Jesus says, if you don't do what exactly what I say, you're wrong. No, it just means that what he's doing is, is he's saying, look at me as an example. How do I treat the prophets? You know, how do I treat the prostitutes? How do I treat the people that are tax collectors? How do I treat people that are the bad people of today's society? And if you notice, Jesus never did that. You know, and, and we are so consumed with, um, and once again, I'm not going to bring anybody into his name because I love, I mean, I love all these people. You know, I do. I really do. Sometimes I, my staff is like, be careful. You know, but, um, but I, I just want to say this. You know, I... How can I say this? I, I I feel like we've got to be careful when it deals with people that are in the prophetic arena that are very politically minded and not Christ minded uh, or, you know, sort of um, do or die black and white. You're going to praise God right now, regardless of what your neighbor feels. And if they don't like it, you know, you just tear down the stronghold. I mean, because you have to think about how many times did Jesus ever do that, you know? Zero. You know, how many times did Jesus say, we're going to do a Jesus march in the streets. We're going to demand that, that every stronghold in this nation is pulled down. I mean, how many times did Jesus do that? Zero. You know, we, we have to look and say, it sounds great and it makes great theatrics and it makes great drama. But we have to face the reality of the kingdom. Because you, I want you to know something and remember this. You know, um... The, you know, a lot of, you know, prophets didn't die for you. Pro apostles didn't die for you. Pastors did not die for you. They're supposed to be the examples of the one who died for you. And, and we love them all. I'm talking about myself here. I've made a lot of mistakes in my life. I've made a lot of oops and errors. And I'm like, God, I wish I could take that back, you know. And I've learned through the school of hard knocks. Heck, I've learned through the school of the hard knocks prophets, you know, life, you know, I mean, I, I used to, I used to be that person. I mean, you know, like, um, 20 years ago, I was that person where I was prophet Jeremy, you know, prophet Jeremy, prophet Jeremy, you know, uh, I, you know, and I was that person who felt like that a prophet's job was to be moody, you know, how many of you have heard that, you know, well, prophets, according to that sort of chart, they're, they got, they're a little moody, they're a little black and white in their thinking, and they're a little, you know, uh, their personalities are strong like this, and that might be true for some Old Testament prophets, but you can't judge people to say that's how the stereotypes of people are. Let me say something. When we look at prophets, okay, now, now I know everyone's on here from everybody from what? Hopefully Africa to, uh, to uh, Ireland, my favorite place, you know, uh, to the U.S., from whites to blacks to whatever. So, so let's just say this. When we say a prophet is, we stereotype in the prophets, they should be like this. Let me ask you an honest question. Is it fair to stereotype black people? How do you feel about that? Is it fair to stereotype white people? Is it fair to stereotype every every rich person? You know, is it is it is it fair to stereotype Baptists or Charismatics? No, and 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 most of you, you know, understand what I'm saying. So when we stereotype prophets to say this is the characteristics of a prophet, it's not true. 
When you think about that, you say, how would I feel if I stereotyped, stereotyped a black person or a white person? So when you think about that, you think on that level because it's very disrespectful, right? And so we don't want to get it in our minds to say, all prophets are this way, all white. You know what I mean? Because... A prophet should be a New Testament prophet should be a person of love. I mean, our our top ministry has been given the ministry of reconciliation, not the ministry of division, not the ministry of if you don't hear me and if I lose thirty thousand people, hallelujah today because of my rough words. You know, I mean, if you know, you're like drama, drama, drama. You know what I mean? And we love and we bless him. Sometimes we laugh with him and at him. But but my point being is. Jesus died to give us the ministry of reconciliation, not the ministry of division. He didn't die to make us fired up. I mean, let's just be real about it, folks. You know, I want you to be so in love with Jesus that it hurts. I mean, and the, and the best way to be in love with Jesus is to be in love with people, the people that he died for, which was humanity. You know, uh, when we deal with the negative people, we have to see that negative people, negativity comes in different forms, okay? And we have to say, are we being negative when we say, I don't care if I lose 30,000 people, you know, come on right now and you better hear the word of the Lord and some of you are being, you know, uh, offended by my word. You know, I mean, you have to think, you know what, we have to be realistic about it and say, hey, we love you and you're doing a job maybe for somebody, but it's not really and it's not really inducing the labor of us birthing forth in the church the labor of love and the labor of reconciliation the labor of grace the labor of you know his grace is sufficient his mercy endures forever not his judgment you know uh mercy triumphs over judgment you know you've done the least of these you've done unto me you know feed the feed the poor visit those in prison take care of the widows uh, you know, I'm going to go and sit next to, you know, uh, uh, the tax collector, you know, those who hate. I'm going to cause a prostitute to pour her tears upon my feet. Those who hate, you know, who hate her. You know, I'm going to, you know, pull a woman in the middle of an adultery, in the middle of adultery who has no glimpse of even asking me to forgive them. I'm going to, you know, they've dragged her into the streets. You, 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 it wasn't like she said, you know what? I slept with that man today and I just, man, I feel really bad about that. You know, Lord, forgive me of my sin. I mean, you're talking about somebody who's like, pardon my language, but like, oh crap, I just got caught in bed with a, with a married man and I'm a married woman. And so she gets dragged down to the streets and Jesus never said, did you repent to me, daughter? No, you're going to burn in hell, sister, today, you horrible, wretched whore. I mean, you know, think about, what, and yet today we would do those kind of things. We'd say, you were caught in sin. That's why you feel bad. You were caught in sin. But I want you to know something. Let's think about this for a moment. Notice that what Jesus did. Notice Jesus said, come on, lady. I mean, did, did, do you think Jesus sat here and said, come on, lady? I mean, you know, pardon my, 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 my crude language, but let's just go there for a moment. Can we do that? You guys are not too religious with me. You know, did, did, did he say, come on, lady, let's just be real about it. You just got screwed over because you just got caught. You know, uh, you, there's no repentance in you. Notice, notice what he said. Notice we would say that today in the church, wouldn't we? But yet notice today what this amazing man said. This amazing, loving son of God said, who represents himself as a lamb of God. He says, hey, you know what? You he dragged her into the street and he drew this, you know, he's sitting here, you know, this drawing something in the sand and never confronting her to say, you just got caught, lady, didn't you? Come on. I mean, you know, it was this attitude of, you know what? If anyone wants to throw a stone at her that hasn't sinned, hey, you, you'd be the first one to do that. You'd be the first one to do that. And, you know, this is the this is the place where we have to look and say, why isn't this the popular message of today in the church? Because it is God's loving kindness that draws people to repentance. And yet we have taken on this persona of not really understanding the truth of the gospel. And yet we're 2,000 years later into this thing, still not really recognizing the fact that we've not learned our lesson. We haven't learned the lesson to say, I need to decrease with being judgmental. I need to decrease with feeling like that if I am like on fire in my negativity and my, you know, black versus white mentality. And if, and if I'm not hardcore 
telling people, I know you're offended by my message. Hallelujah. You know, that 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 tends to bring people to repentance. When God says it's my loving kindness only that draws people to repentance. And yet my people, I've made them flames of fire. Flames of fire of what, God? To be fiery about mercy, to be fiery about righteousness, to be fiery about grace, to be fiery about treating your neighbors as you treat yourself, as you love yourself. And and these are things that I know are not popular in the church, you know, but the, the truth is, you know, when I wrote this book, I wrote it because I didn't want to, you know, let people know we're going to pick out the horrible, rotten, manipulative pastors for what they are, you know, because that's not my nature. Uh, manipulation comes in so many different forms and negativity comes in so many different forms. But what I want to, be, to get the church to understand is this. Recognize. Recognize when you see manipulation because manipulation is not always going to be, you know, um, you leave when I tell you to leave my church, you know, um, you bow to the, me and kiss my ring, you know, and I'll tell you the Holy Spirit will tell me when you need to leave the church. That's not always manipulation. That's manipulation and it's like exposed, you know, that's like outward, external, like duh, you know, manipulation. But manipulation can come in so many different forms. And to be honest with you, we might not recognize this, but when we sit here and we say, and the Lord keeps on telling me right now, you know, you're going to be offended by this and and, and, and all of you are going to just hate what my message, but that's okay because the Lord, you know, we don't realize that that's also hurting people and it's manipulating people because people need to know, I need to know I'm loved. I need to know that God sees through my, my wretchedness. God sees through what I've been through today because I need a hand. I need protection. I need a way of escape. You know, I don't need to feel like you're triggering me to make me feel like I'm going to be like, you know, like um, hard hearted if I go against something you've just said. You know what I'm saying? And we have to begin to realize how God, how his amazing son did it on this planet, you know, and that's the method. That's the pattern. That's the personality. That's the man that we love. That's the man we fell in love with, right? That's the man we fell in love with was this man called Jesus. And and so, you know, I wanted to sort of bring a lot of stuff in this book because I really wanted every one of you to really understand how things can come and uh, how things can appear, how things can come across. And don't, don't be, how can I say this? Don't be confused by the abrasiveness, feeling the abrasiveness of black and white equals the gospel, equals Jesus, because it always doesn't. Nine times out of ten, it doesn't. Because, you know, how are they going to know that we are your disciples, Jesus? Not because we're fired up right now, we're, we're tired of it. You know, Biden, you're coming down, you harlot from hell. You know, God is raising up government and Trump, you know. I mean, and yet, you know, Jesus is probably like, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do of their ignorance, you know. I mean, it's, it's a place where we look and we say, Jesus, how will they know? that we are your truly your disciples how will they know that we are really like really examples of you jesus how would they know that i'm the spit and image the pattern of what you were when you walked on this planet how god how and jesus said by the love that you have not like oh because i love the lord i love god i love god hallelujah no, by the love you have for one another, the people around you that are made in the image and the likeness and the reflection of God, because it's so easy. And listen to me, folks, please hear me out. It is so easy, so easy. Let me say this again. And many of you, I want to hear you say agreed. You know, it's so easy to love someone that you cannot see. It's so easy to say, oh, Lord, I'm in the prayer closet with you 24-7. Oh, I love you, God. Oh, I love you. And all of a sudden, that salesman comes to the door, and I'm like, and you're like, Jesus, hold on one second while I'm vasting in the imagery of who you are in my life. Hold on. Here, here's the door. 
I don't want you have to offer a day. Go away. Oh, but Jesus, oh, I love you. <laughs> I mean, come on, you know. How many of us done that before? How many of us, how many of us I'm gonna tell myself, how many of us have said, Oh Lord, Hundo Shundo, I'm in my prayer closet. I'm just fasting in your presence. Hold on, the phone's ringing. Hello? My God, it's a stupid spam call. Don't call my house again. Click. Oh, but Lord, I love you. <laughs> I mean, it's so easy to love something you don't see, isn't it? It's so easy to love God, him and who you can't see. But you know what God did? God made it tougher on us. And you know what he said? He said, if you really love me, don't give me all this, ah, you know, to the throne. You show me by how you're treating the person who's on the phone. That, that might be their job. And even though you hate it, and they're like calling, you know, and and trust me, I, you know what my, you know what Jeremy's, okay, I'm telling myself, myself, you know what Jeremy's pet peeve is? Okay, now you guys are going to, I'm going to laugh around. Jeremy's pet peeve is this, okay? Hello? Oh, yeah, no, my limited warranty on my car, no, uh, you're not really calling from the limited warranty company because I have no warranty on my car from you. It's through my manufacturer on my car. Click. How many of you gotten those those phone calls? Oh, you're calling from the IRS. You're going to come and arrest me today? Oh, wow. I didn't know that. You know, because you know it's not real. Limited warranty. You know, uh, we're coming after you. You didn't pay your bill. Wow, I didn't pay my bill my credit card. I didn't even realize I had that credit card. I'm glad you reminded me I have a credit card that I didn't realize I had, you know? I mean, come on. You know, and that, those are my pet peeves where I'm like, you want somebody to say, you sorry, so and so and so, click, you know? You want to, and we've probably done it before. However, there's a person on the other end of that phone, and they're doing their job. And they might hate their job as bad as you hate them calling you. But you take that moment and you say this. And I'm, I'm taking, take, help me take this in, Pamela, and everybody else, okay? When they call, we say, yes, you know what? Um, I, 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 I want to thank you for calling, but I don't have a limited warranty. And I know that you know that I don't. And I know you're trying to do this. But, you know, I would want to share this with you. I could tell you off, cuss you out. You know, however, on that limited warranty thing you just called me about, I just want you to know, I know you're trying to earn money. I get that. But, you know, it's not really a right and fair what you're doing. And I want you to know that, you know what, I really am a Christ follower. And I just want you to know, get a, you know, I want you to find a job where you feel loyal. You feel like you can stand behind that job. You feel like you'll be truthful with what you know you're selling. Because I know you don't really like your job. And I want to help you. Can I pray with you to find a better job? Can you imagine? We, they'd be like, that person would be like, what the? What, what is this person doing to me on the phone? You know, like, come on, you know? So um, anyway, but yeah. All right. Love you too, Kristen. I know people's got to go. We're going we're gonna to wrap this up. But anyway, but I just want us to think about this today. I know I gave us a lot of, a lot of funny things today. So get the book today. All right. Get the book today. Download it. Please download it today. Get the book. You'll love it. All right. I love every one of you. Instagram, Facebook, you all are amazing, awesome lights and spirits and sons and daughters of God that I love dearly. So I hope you each have a great day. Help support us by just downloading the ebook. We love that because we need to pay our staff as well. Hey, you know what? Baby needs a new pair of shoes. All right. So I love each and every one. If you have a blessed day, don't forget to tune into our podcast on Wednesdays. Uh, thoughts become things. And also tell your friends about this next Monday. How many of you are like, man, other people need to hear this? Then help us grow it. All right. I love each and every one of you. May you eat. May you all have a dynamic, blessed, wonderful, amazing, powerful day today. God bless.